Welcome to Tiwa Beach, guys, eh? Haven't been here for a few years. We've shown you before in the past. One of my absolute favorite beach camping places in Queensland. This time I'm gonna be solo. Uh, I'm pretty spoiled. I've got my ute with the rooftopper and the caravan. Now, I better tell you now why I've got the caravan and you don't just think I'm wally towing it all up here. Uh, it's because we just had a few days at Stratty and I towed the van. Beck's gone home with the kids to go to school and I don't want to pass up an opportunity to hit Tiwa again. And also, I've lined up with Fred in the background. He's from Norwell. We're going to do a bit of video and stuff around the new train canopy package on my car. That'll be a separate vid for their channel. But I'm going to take you up here, show you the campsite, show you what we get up to, a couple of cool cook-ups, and uh, yeah, me, solo beach camping. Does it get any better? <laughs> Not for me, it doesn't. Update on the ferry cost, it was 22 bucks for the car and the caravan. It's all right, that's only one way though. Once you get off the barge, it's, um, it's a couple of k's to drive on bitumen, so don't go getting ahead of yourself over on the other side, letting tyres down and all that, because there's a, um, probably 10, 15 minutes worth of bitumen before you get to the beach access. And it just goes through a little town of North Shore, past the pub and a little general store. There's another campground here too, before you reach the beach. Um, yeah, nice little spot. I think there's some, from memory, there's some bins and stuff somewhere, so you can get rid of all your rubbish when you get off. And there is a car wash. But um, yeah, you can drive your whole truck and trailer through when you get off the beach. Pretty handy. They've got it all sorted up here, I'll tell ya. But um, I can't remember, yeah, you, you can fit your caravan through. There's a big caravan bay as well. But yeah, anyway, I like it. The cast bar, it's called. Happy days. I always get so excited coming up here. There's another hot tip for you. Don't come up here on the weekends. It's a bit of a haven for the um, younger hooligans and that sort of thing. Um, they have cracked down on it a bit over the years and lately, but it still gets quite busy. So you want to, um, yeah, come in week if you can. It's so good. Right, it's time to air down. So if you're wondering who's in the background, that's Fred. Give us a wave, Fred. So up at Tiwa here, we are doing a bit of stuff with Norweld uh, about the new train canopy package, doing a little video for them. So if you see him in the background, that's who that dude is. Fred, he's a good fella. Uh, anyway, we're gonna air down. So I get lots of questions about tire pressures on the beach um, and I have put it in videos before, but anyway, let's go again. I run 20 PSI all round, except for the rear of the car. I leave an extra two PSI in just because I got 300 kilos of ball weight. So I get enough to belly out of my tire with that ball weight. So 20 PSI front of the car, 20 PSI all around in the caravan, and 22 PSI in the rear of the cruiser, all right? So a lot of people do forget too, one of the big questions we get is, do you air down the caravan as well? Yeah, absolutely. Same principle applies, drop your tire pressures, it increases your, your tread pattern on the sand, your load bearing sort of area, and that way it sort of makes it easier to pull this big rig through soft sand when you're getting there, all right? Happy days. And what do you use to air down? I'll show you. So there's tons of stuff on the market. Um, I do need to try some, new, some of the new stuff, get me some of those automatic deflators, but I've used this forever. And it's just the ARB quickie tire deflator. And all you do, so it's called an easy deflator. You screw the brass thing onto your valve stem, you screw the outside in to take your Schrader valve off, and then you pop the collar and all the air comes out. And then you push the collar back in to check your PSI on each tire. So what it does, it makes it super fast to air down because it's pulling the whole Schrader valve out of the inside of the stem. I'll we'll show you. They do get pretty noisy, but. Bit noisy, yeah? Boom, 
120 psi. That took about 30 seconds to do. Once you've done that, it's just rinse and repeat. Go and do it on the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> it does take a while. Uh, maybe train the kids to do it. And we're away, mate. Tires down. You only got to drive oh, another 100 meters on the bitumen to the to the access, and then you drop onto the beach. Now, my hot tip for the beach driving here is pick the tides. Low tide was about two hours ago, so I've still got four hours of tide going out. So if you ever get in any dramas, you've got lots of time to get yourself out and you should also have enough beach to drive on. So you can get up here in a bit of soft sand, but all you're doing is hurting your car a bit and uh, use a lot more fuel. So I'll give you another hot tip. I always wind my trailer brakes right off too. So if you're stopping in a hurry, it doesn't just bury the wheels of your car into the sand. And then if you try and get out, you'll probably get bogged. So I'll back my trailer brakes right off. All right, now for the fun part. You just get to cruise along, looking at the ocean, mate, just fanging for a beer. I'll tell you what, there's something about as soon as you hit the beach, you just want to crack a tin. It doesn't matter if it's six in the morning or six at night. Uh, it's a nice feeling. And it's about, from memory, I just put my trip meter on, but I reckon it's about 20 k's up the beach to the TY camping zones. Now, there's three different zones you can book. Um, you just jump online, book them, and then you just find your own spot. So they're not demarcated sites. You just go and find one that suits you and your rig and uh, yeah, pull up. So hopefully it looks like when I booked online, it said there's like 440 sites or 440 capacity and there was only, there was 438 left. <laughs> so that should be me and Fred. So hopefully there's, um, we've got the whole zone to ourselves. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, midweek, mate, got to get up here midweek and you got a real good chance of getting plenty of space to yourself which is uh that's why i go camping i know that what is it about beach driving do you reckon just makes you want to have a beer like the salt air or <laughs> i don't know what it is but i'm not complaining Bad day to be a Forks Gold, I know that. Too early to crack a tin? I don't know. It's only a Goldie. Come with me, mate. I've just found one of the best spots I've ever camped at. I know I've been here before, but I'll tell you what, it's hard to get the primo spots. You want one of these ones with a bit of grass, and normally, even if there's only a few people up here, they're taken because the sand gets bloody hot and you want to be able to pull up your van, step out onto the grass, then you don't even have to set up your floor mat and stuff. So, found this wicked little one in here, super easy access, you don't have to go up any soft stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull in here, set up, show you all about it. We on, we're on, hey. Doorway views, mate. I'll get out of your way. Ha, <laughs> ha. Mate, this is primo camping for seven bucks a night. Hey, what I'm gonna do while I'm on my own, I'll just run you through my process of setting up, how I get the car off, uh, setting the van up, a few little tricks and treats of the tools I use and the little products I've got that make things easier. Uh, might be helpful. Plus, it's what I do, like, all the time. So, should be able to show you how to do it pretty well. This is frothing already. Look at that. Beachfront, absolute beachfront. Righto, first we unhook the van and drop this big dog in here. Now, sometimes if you're on a super sandy site, you can run. Um, your Max Tracks has a bit of a, you know, like a base plate for your jockey wheel so you don't keep sinking in the sand. This one, well, we're not too bad here. It's not too, um, too sandy. And I've got a big double jockey wheel on this boss thing, so I'm just going to run it like that. There you go. 
I always leave my chains on when I'm jacking it off, just in case it wants to roll away. I know we're on pretty soft ground or, you know, straight ground and it's sand so it wouldn't roll too far, but it's just good common practice to leave it hooked up and never get in between the pinch points that you're hitching that. Unhook all my cables. I try and keep it like the same every time so you don't stuff it up and then drive off and rip your trailer plug out or anything silly like that. Undo my chains. You know there's little hooks on the inside of your chassis to hang your chains? It took me about five years worth of caravanning to figure that out. Can you believe that? <laughs> I was always like, what do these stupid things do? Eventually someone told me, I'm like, oh, you muppet. How to hang your chains on. Step two, level the van up. So on this one, I've got my little airbag hatch here. And I can come over to my paddles and just adjust them left and right. So send them all the way down to start with. And then I can jack one side up to level the van. I'll tell you what, this is like a marriage saver. Before this, it used to be a nightmare trying to put chocks under the wheels and like get back to back it up and then stop it and whatnot. This took forever, mate. I just bagged the right hand side bag up. Probably go full travel and then she should be pretty much level. Can you see that coming up? How good, mate. No more rolling out of bed. Right, -o, time for the awning. Lift him all the way up. I never leave my awning untied because it only takes like one quick gust of wind and uh, you can flip this thing straight over the top of your caravan. Not only destroy your awning, but destroy like the wall of your caravan, the roof hatches, everything. Where do I keep my gear? And my little stone guard buddy on the top here. I need my impact gun. And then here I've got my straps, I'll throw them out. And then I've got this bag here full of hex pegs so I'll take that out and show you I've got some good ones for when I'm going into sand I'll give you a quick rundown on the gear I've put all my hex pegs in here so I've got a couple of different sorts I've got long and flat ones for when you're in hard ground I've got short ones with hook tops I've also got long ones with hook tops for tying down your awning when it's in sort of hard ground but then when you're on the beach like this I carry these jobbies they're made by the same mob they're just a plastic version and a big long screw and I tell you what, if you're in sand, these things are the go. So I run these in and then I put my awning straps straight onto them. All I do is carry like a 15 mil socket and uh, I switch out the one that I used for me. Um, boss jockey wheel, chuck it on there and screw them in at either end of the awning. Then I can put the strap straight onto them. So you just want to come about a meter out from your awning and sort only about 100 mil in from the end of the barrel and then just screw him in on like a 45 degree angle. And then these straps, these are the navigator ones. They have little rubber inserts for sail track. There's two there and if you're wondering why there's two, it's because there's two different sizes of sail track. Uh, normally the caravan ones are the thicker stuff and then like for Fiamma motorhome sort of awnings and that, they run a thinner sail track. So. Just go and run that tube in the sail track, line it up with your peg, and then you screw off this spring-loaded bracket to it and just wind him in. And then you've got a metal buckle here. You can adjust the tension and that keeps the tension on your awning. Line up your sail track with the awning barrel. Run him all the way along like so. When you line it up with your peg, you come down and you put your spring straight onto your peg. Ready, pull this. Nice and tight. Do one of those either end and your awning's not going anywhere. All right, just like that, mate, we are set up at Tiwal Beach. Got a cold tin out of the fridge. Hey, just about to cook up some lunch, but I just thought I'd give you a bit of a look at where we are. I'm gonna get the drone up, buzz out over the ocean, mate, show you the range in the background. It is the dead set, one of the best places you will find in Queensland. Cheers to that. We just knocked up a quick sanger or a quick wrap for lunch. Uh, I'm gonna show you my Starlink setup. I forgot to um, set that up before, but this new van comes Starlink ready, but not for my Starlink. <laughs> so I'll show you why. My styling still works, just um, not with this fan. By now everyone's seen Starlink, yeah? I'm 
sure they have. If you haven't, it's like a mobile satellite that gives you internet, okay? So, I keep mine in my tunnel boot. Um, there's a few different mobs that do bags, to like storage bags for them, but Navigator do one now, and it is like a PVC lined uh, waterproof bag or water resistant bag with a molded bottom, and it fits perfectly in your tunnel boot and holds all your Starlink gear. So I'm gonna set it up and show you, but um, what I got to show you too is that the new Lotuses that come out now in 2024 come Starlink ready, okay? And um, that's not a lie. I didn't say that as if it's a lie, but it just means it comes 2024 Starlink ready and you've got this plug on the outside of your van, okay? Uh, but because it's 2024 ready, uh, I've got a 2022, I think, Starlink and it's got a different fitting. Mine has like a micro USB fitting on the end of the satellite cable and that plugs into my modem, okay? Uh, yeah, the new ones don't apparently, they have the RJ45, so there's my issue. So for now, um, I still have to run it through the window, but it'll be handy just plugging it into there and then under my lounge seat in the caravan, there is another connection and a power point so I can plug the modem in there and plug the data cable straight in and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna leave it out here. Got my inverter on inside, plug this in to the outside GPO and then push this one in and there you go. That's it, and you get your app on your phone, you can start it up, reboot it, do whatever, but it does it all automatically, so as soon as you power it up, the dish will just spin around, find a signal, as long as it's got a clear circle above it, pretty much picks up a satellite, and it's worked everywhere that we've wanted it to. So, the only downside about Starlink is the freaking cost of it. Like, it was like 500 bucks to buy, and the plan is $170 a month, and that's like the cheapest you can get on the roaming plan, so. I know. I'll tell you, is it worth it? Well, it is for us, because we sort of have run an online business and everything, but is it really worth it if you're just traveling? I don't know. You'll have to toss that up, see if it fits into your budget. Well, I saw you staring at me and decided to say hello. Where you go? When we parted it appeared there was some alert We were both longing for Whoa. So I'm gonna do a bit of a cook up for dinner. I'm a bit late on the uptake with this one. I've seen it ages ago. It's like one of those viral things on Instagram. But it was um, like that Big Mac tortilla thing. So you make like a, a Big Mac, but it's on a tortilla on a fry pan. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Anyway, I'm gonna do it. I reckon it's gonna taste delicious. Everyone that always says like, have you tried the Big Mac thing yet? I'm like, no, but I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna um, set my kitchen up and cook it outside for you and um, give you my rundown. See what I reckon. I only can find these little things called street tacos though. So they're sort of small, which is kind of good because it'll be my take on it. They'll be like viral Big Mac sliders slash slide dealers or something. Anyway. I'll give her up. Oi, oh, I put up. I managed to figure out how to hang me navigator kitchen thing too off my ute. I'll show you that. This bad boy. How good's that? You're gonna want a better look at that, aren't you? Yeah. Have a look at that. Hey? Okay. Uh, everything you need right here herbs and spices, paper towel, utensils, knives, cutlery. I like it. Cutting board, street tacos, onions. I'll just grab one onion. You know, you just dice up a bit of it, like on a Big Mac, there's like a bit of raw onion. A few burger pickles, burger sauce, um, cheese. I'm not quite sure what cheese they use at Macca's, but I found this one. It looks good because it's on a burger. Cheddar natural slices. Then we need. Um, Burger mints, so I just got some pre-flavoured rissoles and I'll just put a bit of extra seasoning on them and squash that on the tortilla. Uh, what else? Iceberg lettuce. Tell you what, haven't they gone up? I paid $7 for that lettuce on Australia the other day. And a few bowls to put it all in. Let's 
Okay, oh, hang on. I'm, I'm like a Nazi. I shouldn't say that word. I'm like really uh, anal about, that's not a good word either. I don't know, food prep and hygiene. I'm always washing my hands and stuff. So keep sanitizer and hand soap all the time in my canopy, in the caravan. All right, give that a shake. Finely diced iceberg lettuce. Put one of these in here. These are our bowls, by the way. The van dining, onion. Open the cheese for a look. Oh yeah, looks like Mac's cheese. It's the right colour. You ever been overseas, like when you go to Canada or America, all the cheese is like really orange? I'm like, why? This is where I'm keeping me little new Fandangle barbecue. Have a look at this. 60 bucks on, on eBay. It's like an electric barbecue. You just plug this in. How's the setup? Look at the view. Oh. Just grab that. Press him out on the tortilla. Oh yeah, it's easy. And you make it real thin, that way it cooks it super fast. Grab some oil, spray me hot plate. Oh, that look all right. Bit of char grilledness. Oh no, oh, look at that, comes out like a little patty. I reckon this is going to be good, eh? I'm going to put, try and make it as big mac as I can. A bit of onion. Oh, a bit of cheese. Cut them in half because I reckon they're only small ones so they'll be alright. There we go. Got some burger pickles. Oh, mate. I used to hate these things when I was a kid. Like I would take the first thing I pulled off a cheeseburger would be these. Now, can't get enough of them. A bit of um, lettuce. There we go. You'll have to get duck back in here, Fred. Fred's gonna oh. tell you what he reckons. Even though he's first not going the whole hog because he nah, won't have lettuce. <laughs> we'll be all right. Burger sauce. Good cheers. Cheers it. That. Cheers, mate. Big Max and Tiwa Beach, eh? Oh, that's pretty good. All good? Mm. Oh, that legit tastes like a Big Mac. I'm not even kidding. Oh. Cheers to a good day, mate. I'm gonna finish up the Savo. A couple more of them. Just dropped my beer. Hang on. Saved it. Didn't quite land the sand. Don't put your beer on a freshly polished bonnet. It's a bit slippery. Hey, um, a couple more Big Mac tacos. Watch the sun go down. Early night. And tomorrow, I'm gonna wait for the tide to go down and go and have a look at Double Island. See what the lagoon's doing. It's nice up there, right? See you in the morning. One more thing to show you before I go to bed is dessert. Now I never, I always forget to buy stuff for dessert. My mate AJ runs Campus Pantry. Now I've, I always carry his meals in my ute. So like they do dinners and so you can have curries and spaghettis and all that. But he's made a dessert. And you're probably not gonna believe me when I show you, but it's freeze dried ice cream. Look at that. This flavour is the decadent chocolate. It's a couple of different ones. Kids, and my kids love it, mate. I've got about 10 packets that I leave in my youth. I don't tell anyone it's here. So hopefully the kids don't watch this. Um, because I just like having a little snack and sometimes if I get that craving at night, I sneak out to the youth and grab some. But there it is. Look at that. It's actual ice cream 
freeze dried. Hang on, ready? So it's kind of like a little biscuit, but you let it like melt on your tongue. Hmm. And it's kind of like it's that same flavour you get when you have a spoonful of ice cream. It's just a different texture. Right, freeze dried ice cream. Nailed it, AJ. Ooh. Morning time. Hey, I'm just going to drive down the beach and have a cook up. And by drive down the beach, I mean about 20 meters away. <laughs> Check it. So yeah, I'm down the beach and look, camp's just here. <laughs> but it looks too good not to cook down here. So I will come down here, kick this out, and I'm going to um, cook up on the induction today. Bit of bacon and eggs for brekkie. Sit down here and have another coffee, and just enjoy the serenity. I'll give you another look at this. You see anyone that way? Nah. See anyone that way? Oh, yeah, I can see it's one person like way out there. I like it. One for me, one for Fred. Get the fry pan out, fire him up. I like cooking bacon and eggs on like 1600 watts. Just find it doesn't burn stuff. If you've got it on the other one, it kind of burns it pretty hard. So we've decided to do the run to Rainbow before the high tide. The tide's not that big, looking at the tide charts. So, um, and there's still some cars going up and back. So we'll go up there this morning, and then the high tide can come in, we'll sit up there, chill out for a bit, and then come back as the tide's dropping. So that's the plan. I don't think Fred's ever been there, so. You've never been to Double Island, eh, Fred? No, I haven't, nah, that'll be a first. Do you ever see like, in posts from like Australia Day and that, and there's like a thousand utes out on that sandbar? Oh, yeah, 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 oh, it's underplayed. Yeah, yeah, that's it, eh? And I think it's got like the longest wave in Australia too, like when it's pumping. So about 10 k's up the beach, mate, you'll find the freshwater track just off to your left. You take that and then it's um, a 20 kilometer inland track to get to, hang on a sec, I'll show you this sign. There you go. That's all you want to look for on the beach. Another camping area here too, but you're sort of tucked inland on a, a little like bushy campsite. I'd rather be down on the beach. I can give you a bit of info. When you get to the freshwater campground, there is, booyah, a couple of dump points. There you go. So also that's probably a good time to tell you, Tiwa Beach is now, um, you must have a chemical toilet to camp here. So none of these buckets or bags or any of that, no digging a hole anymore. If you don't have a portable toilet, with you and your camping gear, you can get fined and you're not allowed to camp. So, anyways, there you go. There's a dump point of fresh water. So you can run down the beach 10 k's and um, dump your canisters if needed. Oh, there's water there too. There you go. I don't know if it's drinking water or not. Hang on. Untreated. Oh. That's all right. Might be all right for showers and stuff. There's rubbish bins here too. So about another 5 k's up the beach, you'll find one called the Leisure Track. And this is the one that takes you over to DI. If you want to go to Rainbow just for like a pie at a pub feed or something, take that Rainbow, um, the freshwater track. But if you want to go to DI, take the next one up, the Leisure Track. I'll give you what it looks like driving around Double Island Lagoon. Just like that mate, we are set up at Double Island Point. Can you believe it mate? I'll get the drone up and show you around, but this place, mate, 
you've seen photos, I'll try and find some and drop them in. This can get chock a block, like a parking lot full of people. That's how popular it is. I'm here on a Wednesday and we've got it pretty much all to ourselves. Oh. Oh. This way is Double Island Point. That's the track we come in on. This way, you've got Rainbow Beach way down the beach. And there's also a heap of these coloured cliffs along there. That can be a dodgy stretch, especially on a high tide. You see lots of cars get, go under down there, get bogged going around the trees and end up getting swamped. So tackle that stretch with care. But this side, if you're on a dropping tide, you're pretty sweet. It's mint, eh? Big sandbars out here. When the swell's on, they get like one of the longest waves in Australia coming off that point. I love it here. How good's this? Waiting for the tide to drop and I'm cruising out on the sand spit at Double Island. So I've got Tiwar on one side of me, Rainbow Beach on the other. Big sand spit down the middle here. So by the time I get out to the end, I'm gonna be like sitting out on a point surrounded by water. <laughs> it's pretty cool, eh? I like it. Perfect day. No surf on today, but just like primo conditions just for chilling. Oh, I miss the fam actually. I wish the kids were here. They'd be frothing on this. Chuck a couple of rods out, chase a few flatties, lunch, swim. Mate, Tiwa delivering again. Too good not to go for a swim. That water out here on the sandbar just looks insane. Yep. That good. See so what it gets a bit creepy in that deepy, that dark green area. It drops off super fast. <laughs> like feels all eerie and sharky. But Yabby's there, eh? Bring Yabby pump, you can probably pump Yabby's on that bank. Whiting, see some flatties scooting about. It's a hectic lagoon. Well, there you go. That's a little day trip up to Double Island of the lagoon. Hey, uh, I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a long time this afternoon, and I've always wanted to do it, uh, but I'm never able to. I'll give you two guesses. What do you reckon? Well, there's a half a canoe. Um, I'm going to have a nap. I'm going to have a daytime nap in the caravan. That's just unheard of when you got kids around never happens. But I'm like, eh, having a bit of a yawn, eh, driving on the way home. So I'm gonna go and put the fans on, open the windows and just chill, hey? Now that's living the dream. All right, I'm just getting in the car and I'm gonna move sites. So the whole bloody beach is empty and I've come home and someone's parked up in the one next to me. Um, so I'm gonna move, anyway, I'm just gonna, Spend 10 minutes, or I'll spend 10 minutes packing up. I'm hitched up, and I'm just gonna shoot down the beach and find another empty campsite amongst the 3,000 kilometers of empty campsites. <laughs> All right, I still don't get it why people have to camp next year, but they do. All right, I'll go find another one. Come with me, I'll show you the new spot. It's pretty similar to the other spot, it's just that there's no one camping right beside me anymore. So, I only drove about five k's down the beach, and I reckon I passed about two other campers in that five kilometers. Uh, and now I found another good spot. Tucked up behind the dune, my own little viewing access area in the top there, and then no one for the eye can see. I like it. All right, I'm gonna spend one more night here, have a barbecue, have a couple of bourbons, and then um, got to get up at six in the morning to chase this tide, or beat this tide, and get back to the ferry. How good. Look at this cliff behind me. Magic. It's good, eh? Well, I should tell you, 
I had a couple of people stop me on the beach while I've been up here and they go, oh, I've been too worried to bring our caravans up here. Like, what do you, what do you think? Is it sketchy? Are you worried about it? And I'm just like, no, no. Nah. It is so easy, mate. Drop your tire pressures to 20. I've got a four and a half ton car and a four ton caravan and it just cruises, eh? You sit on 60, um, just take your time. The accesses to the campgrounds are easy. So it's really nothing to stress about, eh? Really nothing to stress about. Just make sure you pull in four-wheel drive, drop your tires, and be laughing. Time to make a platter. Actually, I should show you our, my window views. I'm used to saying our, but I'm here on my own. So it's just my view. Have a look at this. Ah. Can you believe that? How good is that, mate? But uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make up a little platter, just for me, it's nice. Um, you know how annoying it is when you make, <laughs> especially when this stuff costs so much money, you make up a real nice platter, and you haven't seen the kids for ages, they're all playing or something, and then as soon as you serve it, they, they sniff it out, they all come racing home and just destroy your platter that probably cost you 30 bucks with salami and kibana and all that, so. Anyway, you're gonna, this is gonna be my dinner, I think. I might cook something else up, I'll see how I go. But, I never get to eat just like a nice little platter on my own without a thousand fingers dipping into it and double dipping chips and stealing all the good bits of cabana. So, today, my friends, is it. How romantic. It's me. Oh, my platter I nearly dropped in the sand. And a beach view. My own little seat. I love me Bundy rum, but have you ever had this stuff? Oh. I keep it in the freezer inside. If you didn't know, spirits don't freeze, so it just sort of goes a bit syrupy, but it stays super cold. And then that way, when you pour your um, your mixer in, which is, here's another thing I'll show you. Look at this: zero sugar, zero caffeine Coke. It's gold, mate. I reckon it tastes pretty similar. Yeah, you don't get sugar, you don't get caffeine, so you're not like getting big and you're not staying awake. <laughs> There's my bourbon whiskey right there, son. Anyone else ever talk in like a random American accent? Like a yokel one? Like, ah, oh, from Kentucky. Like, Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a weirdo, eh? How's the serenity, mate? Hey? Can you believe it? I'm the only one, oh well, I am now. I wasn't before. Like, I can't see anyone for a kilometre that way or a kilometre the other way. It's absolute serenity. It does not get any better than this at Tiwa Beach. Woohoo! Look alright, doesn't it? I reckon I should probably put oil on them. Hang on. Hey! That's how you cook kebabs after you've had about 12 beers. Well, that's morning time and I'm getting out of here. I made it. I got up for the sunrise. I'm gonna drive down the beach back to the ferry. It's pretty bloody nice. Good, life is good, yeah. All right, we're 
we're back off the beach. I'm just gonna show you a couple of ways I can air up the car in the van. We've got two compressors, so there's an ARB dual compressor in the back of the ute. And there's also the airbag man compressor under the van for the Cruise Master airbag. So for the van, you can come down here, plug into the line out, turn your air compressor on, and then come down, grab our tire fitting, and air up. This one's good, it's just got a chuck on it, so you don't have to hold it on, you can just push him on, locks on there, and you can pick up the gauge, it's a new digital one, and away you go. Air him up. Now this one, um, the one on the van's a bit slower than the one in the car, it's the ARB one in the car's a dual one, this is just a single piston compressor under here for the, the um, airbags in the tank, so there you go. I go back up to like 45 psi for my van tires. Oh, you have a look at this. I was just pumping up this tire. Look at this thing hanging off here. <laughs> I almost went to grab it thinking it was a bit of silicon or something, but it's a blue bottle. There you go. You know those little jellyfish with the blue bottle that sting you and hurt like hell? Yeah, there's heaps on the shoreline. You can hear them popping as you run over them. And that's one there. So don't touch them because that'll hurt. for the car we swing in here and we turn this bad boy on so up in there is the ARB dual compressor I'll see if I can give you a look at that we come out here it's all wired in you open your tank up on the end is where you push your hose in click come up here and press the switch if you're wondering what they are they're my tire pressure sensors for the tire pressure monitor about 46 pound in the back of my car, 44 in the front. One last job to do and that is empty the toilet canister on my way out. How's the dump point but mate? You can this shows you how busy the beach could get. One, two, three, four, like four lanes of shit emptying happiness. <laughs> Man, imagine when it's like school holidays, it'd be a always have sanitizer in my ute, right in that door there. Well, that brings me to the end of this episode, mate. It's been a cracking couple of days on my own and hanging out with Fred. Um, anyway, back on the cable ferry now, back across to Noosa and got about an hour to drive home. Until next time, stay safe. Comments, questions, feedback down below. Um, thanks for your support, guys. See you in the next one. Just thought I'd show you. We're doing lots with this, and we're back at 97% uh, at bedtime, and the fridge is still going, and um, it'll still be going all night. And um, yeah, like me, probably go all night. Still got a few bourbons left. <laughs>